Hey there, enjoyers. Hope you're doing really well. No matter what location you're in today, I pray God's blessing, favour, presence would be right there. We are in for a great word. I, I, you might be like, Shane, you can't say we're in for a great word because you're going to bring the word. I know I'm going to bring the word, but I've got to tell you, as I've, been, as I've been meditating, as I've been thinking about this word today, I know that God is going to speak to you. That's right. You say you, I say you. No matter what location you're in, if you will lean in today, the Spirit of God is going to bring this word to you in a way that you can receive it, you can apply it, and then you can enjoy the fruit thereof. So get ready, enjoy us. Let's come around the Word. As I was driving down the road, I think it was on Wednesday, I was driving down the road thinking to myself, okay, Lord, what do you want to speak about? What do you want to speak about? How many of you find God will speak to you in the strangest of places and in the strangest of ways? So I'm driving down the road Wednesday uh, mid-afternoon or thereabouts, and as I'm driving along, I, I have this thought. I have this thought to myself. I look up and I see the thirsty camel. You say, what? That's right, I saw the thirsty camel. How many of you know the thirsty camel? Keep your hand down if you do right now, but you know what I'm talking about. I see the thirsty camel sign right up there. When I think about thirsty camels, the ones that leap to the forefront of my thinking are of course the camels that belong to the servant of Abraham when he went looking for a wife for Isaac. Genesis 24 from verse 17 says, running over to her, the servant asked, Please give me a drink. Certainly, sir, she said. And she quickly lowered the jug for him to drink. When he had finished, she said, I'll drill water for your camels too. She kept carrying water to the camels until they had finished drinking. The servant watched her in silence, wondering whether or not she was the one the Lord intended him to meet. Then at last, when the camels had finished drinking, he gave her a gold ring for her nose and two large gold bracelets for her wrist. Now, as I read this passage of Scripture, I'm thinking it's possibly the most romantic thing that I've ever read. Is there anybody else like that or is it just me? I'm like, oh my Lord, look at this woman. Girls, if you're single and you're looking for romance, can I suggest that you look for a man who's got thirsty camels and ask if you can water them? Now, the reason that this gesture here is just so impressive to me is because a thirsty camel can drink a whole lot. That's right, thirsty camels can drink up to 30 gallons of water. Now, for those of you who don't know what a gallon is, all right, multiply it out like this, 30 times 10. You've got 10 camels, 30 times 10, 300 gallons. Now, there is, there is 3.79 litres in a gallon. Multiply that out, you end up with 1,137 litres. Can you imagine, this girl must have had arms, that's all I'm saying, because she's bringing all this water to the camels. Man, she's up and about. That is a whole lot of water. Now, I know that I've, most, I've lost most of you right here. You're lost completely. You're lost in the romance of the story. You want to go looking for thirsty camels in the hope that it will lead you to gold rings and bracelets and uh, everything in its time. We'll just leave that for another day. Let's focus for a little bit today on the thirsty camels. In fact, why don't we just back up a little bit? Why don't we just leave the camel to the side and just begin to uh, focus on our thirst, the thirst. Is there anybody thirsty? Is there anybody dry? For the truth is, what you hunger and thirst for in this season is either going to set you up for the most amazing, God-filled and inspired 2022 or leave you depleted and empty at the end of 2022. The truth is, Scripture has so much to say about our hunger and our thirst. Psalm chapter 107 verse 9 says, For He satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with what? With good things. Praise God for that. Or every location, everywhere. You should be on your feet thanking God right now. Why? Because He satisfies the hungry. He fills the hungry with good things. In John chapter 6, reading from verse 33, it says, For the bread of God is He who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry and he who believes in me will never, never, ever be thirsty. Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse one. Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink, even if you have no money. Come take your choice of wine or milk, it's all free. Why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does, does you no good? Listen, 
and I will tell you where to get food that is good for your soul. Praise God. I don't know about you, I can get excited right about there. As in the psalmist is like, come on, you want, you, want, you want food that is good for your soul? Okay, let's lean in right here. Let's lean in now. I don't know that I've ever experienced a time quite like this where there is so much hunger and so much thirst, not just within the church community, the Christian community, the faith community, but the whole community. But this one thing I know, as believers, and you're a believer, if you're in Christ today, you're a believer. As believers, if we do not direct our hunger and our thirst, in the end, our hunger and our thirst is gonna direct us. So what do we do? We need to get up and about and begin to direct our hunger, begin to direct our, our thirst. So where do we go? As we come to the end of 2021, many are lacking satisfaction. You know it as well as I do feeling unfulfilled with life's realities. So where do we go? I'm so glad you asked that question today because I've got the answer for you. Where do we go? We need to go to the well. And you say, well, well, well. Yes, we need to go to the well. That's exactly where we need to go. We need to go to the well. In John chapter four, reading from verse six, it says, Jacob's well was there and Jesus tired as he was from the journey. Is there anybody, we'll just pause, just see love for a moment. Is there anybody tired from the journey? Is there anybody tired from the last 18 months? Is there anybody tired from the last eight months? Is there anybody tired from the journey that we have been on together? Well, that's where Jesus was at. He had been journeying and he was tired. What did he do? He sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour when a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and his herds? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said, sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Go to verse 27, it says here, just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, no one was game to ask, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, four more months and then the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Praise God. And you know what? I honestly believe in joy is everywhere. No matter what location you're in, from one end of the globe to the other, I believe, I absolutely believe that there has never been a time like this where the fields are literally white under harvest. They are white and they are ripe and they are ready for harvesting. The reason that this passage is so amazing to me is because it reveals that all we need to quench our thirst and all we need to satisfy our hunger can be found at the well. That's right, at the well. Now, I'm sure you've all worked out that we're not talking about a natural thirst and we're not talking about a, a natural hunger. We're, we're talking about a spiritual thirst and a spiritual hunger that has the power to satisfy us individually 
or torment us individually. That is the reality. As we talk about these things, you can find uh, a fulfilment and satisfaction for your soul, or you can find torment. Now, I don't know about you, I know what I want. I wanna find satisfaction. I wanna be fulfilled in my life in Christ. I I wanna be filled in my inner parts, but we need to be very deliberate as to where we will position ourselves that we might find what we're looking to find. True and lasting satisfaction. For this thirst and for this hunger of the soul is found in two ways. And it all happens around the well. That's right, it all happens around the well. The well is simply where the people are at. And every day you're gonna find people around the well who are both hungry and thirsty spiritually doing the following two things. Now, I say the following two things and as we get ready for 2022, can I encourage you enjoyers, position yourself now, position yourself at the well, at the well, at the well. And you say, well, which well? Well, there's a number of wells and we'll talk a little bit about that. But but the reality is you just need to make a choice here to position yourself at the wells that are God wells, that are life-giving wells, that are wells that are gonna fulfill you and and the wells that are gonna satisfy you. I I promise you this, if you will position yourself in 2022, you will get to the end of it and you're gonna say, man, look what the Lord has done. The Lord has been so, so good. I promise you the Lord is good and He wants to do you good. All right, so we're gonna come around the well now. People who are hungry, spiritually hungry, spiritually thirsty, we're gonna come around the well and what are we gonna do? Point number one, People around the well need to receive living waters. That's right, we need to receive living waters. That's what we're doing, we're receiving, receiving. Everyone say receive, wherever you are, whatever location. Just say it together now, say receive, receive. That's right, we need to receive, receive. I know a lot of you are, are great givers, you're happy to release what's in your hand, but can I encourage you, before you can give anything, you have to be able to receive. In Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse one, come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Is there anyone thirsty amongst us? What are we to do? If you're thirsty, spiritually thirsty, what are we to do? You know what we're to do? We are to come. Come, 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 come. Everyone say, come, come. All right, I heard that. Here's some news for you, church. You gotta get this, you gotta work this thing out. If you don't work it out, time is gonna pass you by. Maybe Jesus is gonna pass you by. Here's the thing, here's the news. All right, the well isn't gonna come to you. And it's like, say what? That's right, the well isn't coming to you. You need to come to the well. Yes, you can have all of all, all the time that you want with God, your alone times with God, your own alone worship times with God. Understand that you can all have that. You can have time in the presence of God. You can encounter God and all of that is good. But we must always remember, we've got to remember this. We've got to realise this, that we are part of the body of Christ. When you were born again into a life in Christ, immediately in the same moment, in the same reality of being born again, you were actually grafted into the body of Christ, which of course we know to be the church. That's right. When you came alive in Christ, you became a part of the church. You can't do church by yourself. You're not the body by yourself. You have gotta do church with brothers and sisters, with the brethren, with other, other men and women of God who are dreaming, who are seeing what God is doing amongst us that we all might move together. We need each other and each other has something that each of us need. This is the reality. We, we, we need each other and each of us has something we need. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not standing here today looking down this lens as though you're, you are someone else or no, 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 you, you, are, you are an extension of my life. You are an extension of my world. God has brought us together that we might be a church together as iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. We're in this together. We bring strength to each other. We bring encouragement to other, each other. Yes, I bring encouragement to you, but how many of you know you actually bring encouragement to me? I bring strength to you. You bring strength to me. And this is why we need to be at the well together that we might strengthen and encourage each other. As the body of Christ, we must be, must be ready and able to receive from others. 
That's right. We have to be able to receive from others. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of people that are happy to give, but when it comes to receiving, it's like we, we, we struggle. We get awkward in that space. We shouldn't be awkward. We need to humble ourselves before God and humble ourselves before each other and acknowledge we need each other. You might think that when I come to church or when I go to friendship group or when I worship or, 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 or come around the Word that, that I come to give. Yes, I'd come to give, but you know what I come to do first? I actually come to receive. And you might be like, really? Are you, are you for real? I'm absolutely for real. I cannot be who I am unless I step in and receive from the body of Christ first. I will never be who I'm meant to be unless I'm receiving from the body of Christ. What, what, I'm, what I'm loving about our services at the moment is that people are stepping into church again and, and I'm seeing an overflow within their hearts. I, I, I love it. There's an overflow of God just, just coming out as people are stepping in and around the eternal well of God again. I, I love it. I spoke a few weeks ago about smiley eyes. How many of you know smiley eyes are an overflow of a joyful heart. That is a reality. Is in you, the, the eyes are the window to the soul. When you see smiley eyes, as in, and I'm talking about genuine smiley eyes. I'm not talking, you know what I'm talking about. We can paint our eyes up occasionally and try and make them look smiley, but reality. But when you see genuine smiley eyes, it's an overflow of a joyful heart. And as I'm talking to people all around the life of Enjoy at the moment, I'm hearing of a peace that's flowing like a river. I'm hearing of a hope that's being restored. I'm hearing of a faith that's rising like a relentless tide to lead God's people on and forward into the great things that God has got for us all. You know you know who I'm hearing this from? I'm hearing it from people that are sitting at the well with us. Friends, I want to encourage you. This is not a time to stay away from the well. This is a time to run to the well. That's what, that's what happens when we gather around the well and encourage one another. There's a Holy Ghost overflow. Friends, I want to encourage you, receive, receive, receive today. And everybody said, amen together. All right, so that's the first thing. The second thing is this. The second thing that the hungry and thirsty will be doing around the well is releasing living waters. That's right, releasing living, living waters. So we're going to go there to receive and then we're going to release. Receive, release. And it's like, it's like really, think about it. You have a woman at the well who is receiving, you have Jesus at the well who is releasing, all right? Receiving, releasing. I love the miracle of what occurs as you begin to release. Church, can I encourage you today? As in, if you're feeling dry, if you're feeling hungry, if you're feeling, uh, if you're feeling uh, dissatisfied, if you're feeling unfulfilled, can I encourage you to rise up in faith, be filled and then begin to release. Begin to release in Jesus' Name. Just as there is the Word and the Spirit, we have both a hunger and a thirst. And while your thirst can be quenched by what you receive at the well, your hunger is satisfied by what you release at the well. In John chapter 4, reading from verse 32, it says, But He said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then His disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought Him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. Do you not say, four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Praise God. Friends, you can stand like a deer in the streams of living water until Jesus comes back. You can do that if you want, but I can promise you that you'll never be truly satisfied until you lead someone else to the water. There is something in you that somebody else needs. There is a word in you that somebody else has to hear. There is an action in you that is gonna change somebody else's life. I, I promise you friends, God wants to pour out His living waters into you that living waters might come from you. A disciple who's lacking disciplines in regards to the harvest is one who's also lacking discernment as to what pleases the Lord. And I, I'm sure we don't want to be in that space. We want to please the Lord. Therefore, we need to discipline ourselves in regards to our discipleship. But when we, God's very own people, learn how to receive both from God and His people, and likewise learn what it means to release the good st stored up within us, 
It, it is then that the harvest is going to come in. Friends, I want to encourage you. If you will hunger and you will thirst for souls, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to see something turn on the inside. There are so many people living aimlessly in this season. So many people have lost their way. So many people have disconnected. You know what I have seen personally? This is what I've seen over the last two years. I have seen that those people who are leaning into the body of Christ and receiving and releasing, not just one or the other, but receiving and then making, taking the time to release, I have seen them rise and rise and rise. The last two years has not been a waste of, of time for them. They have continued to grow. They have continued to bear fruit. You don't bear fruit by receiving, not by itself. No, 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 no. You bear fruit as you receive and then you release. In John chapter 6, verse 2, it says, why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? And Joyce, can I ask you everywhere, no matter what location you're in today, can I ask you this question? Why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does, does you no good? Listen and I will tell you where to get food that is good for your soul. Praise God. How many of you want food that is good for your soul? I don't know about you. I want food that is good for my soul. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else is going to follow after us. There's no doubt about that. I am looking for good food that's good, not just for my life, but that is good for my soul. I believe that's what you want too. Church, this is a time to run to the wells, run to the wells. I'm not talking about the thirsty camel. That's not the well I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your football club. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the Christmas celebrations. No, 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 no. As in there, there are many wells that all of the community are running around to and, and they're out there running all over the place. But you know what? At the end of the day, they're depleted. They're not satisfied and they're not fulfilled. This is a time to run to the eternal wells, the wells that, that were dug by our forefathers so many years ago. I want to encourage you to run to the well of life. I want to encourage you to run to the house of God. I want to encourage you to step into the harvest and then step into the world and do something that's going to change the, all of humanity forever. You might be like, Shane, do you honestly believe that, that we can do something that's going to change humanity forever? I honestly do. I honestly, I, I, I honestly do. When, when, when I think about where the Lord has brought us from and where the Lord has taken us to, and it's like, if, if we were here and now we're here, God's got to hear for us to go to. I, I, I know we're only beginning. We're 23 years into this journey and it's like, only beginning? Yeah, for many of us, it's only beginning. But as I look around all the locations today, I can see people's lives that have been changed forever. Why is that? The, 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 people's lives have been changed forever because somebody went to the well and received and then released. They received and then they released. There are wells. I want to encourage you, come back to the wells, step back into the wells. I know for there's, there's, there's many people out there today that are just starting to step back into now. Make this decision. If you're in a location today and you've just stepped back in, continue to step in, continue to step in, continue to step in. Be in the place of worship. Abide in the house of God. Step into the place of friendship groups. Step into a place of a department, a ministry. Just begin to find a place where you might be, rele might be released into all that God has got for you, that that which God has put in you, that it, which is which you've received, might now be released. That others might be blessed also. You know, there's a reason we have do something uh, on all the walls as we leave our, our our locations, and that is simply because I I want to, and I believe God wants everyone to be reminded that as much as we're going to do things in here, we need to do things out there. As in the, the church, the church is only, you know, as in the, the building is a building. We, we come together. We have these times of celebration where we encourage each other, remind ourselves of what the Word of God says. But then we're to go to a lost and hurting world. We're to step out into the harvest field and do something. That's what Jesus was doing. He was doing something. What did he talk about? He talked about living water to this woman. And it's like the woman just came to draw water. Now, the th thing I love about that story is Jesus asked for a drink. I don't read that he actually got his drink. I got a feeling she was so bamboozled in the moment. As in, and he, he went after the water issue. It's like, you want life, girl? I got life for you. It comes from me. She had to receive it. And once she received it, she could go get the town. Friends, there is a town in you. There is a nation in you. There is a city in you. There are, pe there are your family, whatever it may be, it's in you. But you've got to receive first that you might then go and release. Enjoy us everywhere. 
This is our time. This is our time. I want to encourage you. It's time to lean in. Lean in and receive and then begin to release. Lean in and receive and begin to release. Your fruitfulness is not just in the receiving, but in the releasing. I want to encourage you today. Enjoy us everywhere. Rise up in faith like you never have before and receive, receive. Come to the well and receive. And then look for others around the well that you might release to. But then as you go from the well to the wells, wherever they may be, Release, release, release the good things that God has put in you. Enjoy us. Can I pray for you today? Is that okay? Maybe you're sitting in one of our locations and you're like, man, I needed to hear that. And if you're thinking that, you did need to hear that. That is the truth. That is the truth. You did need to. I needed to. Now you might be thinking, oh, where does he get this stuff? You know where I get this stuff from? I, I get it from the presence of God. I promise you, as you come to the wells, come to the wells, keep coming to the wells, God is going to release things uh, into your life that you might receive. Then once you've received, then you can release, which is all that I'm doing today. All I'm doing today. But I get a feeling as I'm doing this, there's a fire beginning to burn in some of you. There's a sense that 2022 is going to be better than 2021. Uh, there is a sense that God, yes, God does have a plan for me. God does have a purpose for me. And if that's what you're thinking, you're thinking right today. There's no doubt about that. So let me pray for you. Enjoy us everywhere, no matter what location you're in. Why don't you just pause Posture yourself and get ready to receive now. Just posture yourself. Just raise your hands if you're comfortable to do that. Get ready to receive a blessing from God right now. Maybe extra revelation, a fresh revelation of how important you are to God. He wants to meet you at the well. He wants to fill you at the well that you might go from the well and release every good thing that He would put into your life. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now. Lord, I pray that we would have a revelation, a fresh revelation of who we are as the body of Christ. We are all needed. We are all required. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, in the, as a body, we are one and we are unified. We are believing for great and mighty things to come. I pray, Lord God, as 2022 comes around and Lord, we, we, Lord we, we, we've themed up this year, Lord God, my faith, Lord. We want our faith to grow. So I pray, Lord, for every enjoyer everywhere that we would lean into the wells, Lord God, that we'd lean into the wells, that we would come and draw and receive freely, freely, freely. Lord, let us be a people who know how to receive from you and receive from each other, then once we've received and we are filled and we are satisfied in our soul and our spirit, may we rise up in faith and begin to release it, release it, release it. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name right now that we would be a receiving people and we would be a releasing people in 2022. So this day, and every day, we give you praise, Lord God. With great expectation, we receive today and it's with great expectation that we believe we're gonna step out even from this day and begin to release, Lord God, into the harvest field, the good news, the good Word of God, Lord, of the good things that you've done in our lives that others might be blessed also, that others might come to the well and receive, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, Lord, even as we sponsor, Lord God, Lord, in certain parts of the world, wells to be dug. May we be a, a well digging people, Lord God, who set up wells everywhere, Lord God, so that others might come and receive freely also. Lord, we give you praise and we give you honour. I speak blessing over every person and over every location now in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said together, Amen and amen. God bless you, enjoyers. Between now and Christmas, I don't know that we're going to get to be together, but wherever we get to catch up next, I, I, I just can't wait for that day and I pray that it would come quickly. Until then, between now and then, what we're going to do now is hand back to your location, Pastor. Have a great day in church. God bless you. We'll see you real, real soon. Bye for now.